This is hydrogen tap. What you're looking at here is more of the pulse system that I'm building for the 3LR series. You can see there the two sets of resistor switching units that I've incorporated into the unit. Instead of using a variable switch or a pot, part of this system will go to these resistors so I know exactly the resistance that goes into the set. What these resistors do is change the frequency or the pulse width of the modulation system. You can see the main board there that has the 556 chip in it, which I've wired or almost finished wiring now. The hardest part in making a pulse with modulation system is making it so it's fine tunable. That's what all this wiring is about. That's what those resistor panels were. It doesn't do any good if once you hit the right frequency that you can't recreate it. You can see everything is fitting together rather nicely here. You can see those two pots there by my left hand. There's two of them that work in parallel with each other so I can get a finer tune circuit. And there on the bottom left are the two resistor sets with the exact numbers by each one. The way this system works, or the way I'm wiring it, is that once I get the frequency, or once I get close to a frequency that I'm interested in, I throw one of those black switches there, and it throws it to a meter. And the meter will give me the exact resist resistance values so I can recreate it. You can see the resistors there. Those are the values on the left. That's 2.2K ohms. And the systems on the right, or the switch on the right, multiply that times 1,000. Again, that is a front end of the resistor panel that was in the back. Those two silver knobs on the right are variable resistors or pots, and the one on the top is also a variable resistor. The switches on the right bottom, well, let's go look at these. These two shut off the voltages going in to the system. The switches are on the right bottom there. They throw the resistor panels to the meter so you can get the reading off of it. There's a good look at the back and you can see the resistors again on the bottom. Those are the two switches that turn off the power to the unit itself, and the one on the bottom turns off the power output to the cell. I separated all the wires out so they're very easy to work with, and you can see the output panels there. This is a pulse width modulation unit that I'm building. I 
that section right there that I'm putting the wires into. Those are the two pots that change the pulse width frequency. Building a pulse width modulation system is not as hard as when you're putting it together, trying to make it so that you can get very accurate readings on it and also so that you can vary the frequency once you get close to it. That's what's keeping or that's what's making the time here, causing how much time it is for me to put this together. I put this together a number of times to try to come up with a unit that will both be easy to recreate itself and also one that I can calibrate. So once I get the frequency I'm looking for, I can write it down and come back to it. Most of the or the hardest part in doing anything like this research is to recreate it. It doesn't do any good at all if you build a pulse with modulation unit, you get the frequency and then you can't reproduce it. So 90% of this problem here is building a system that you can go back to once you get the frequency. And what I'm going to be using with this is two digital meters and backup meters. If you're interested at all in what I'm doing and you don't know, I have a web address that's hydrogen tap tap.com you can go to and see the projects, some of the projects that I'm working on. It's hydrogentap.com. A lot of the things that are in my videos, the still frames are there if you want to go to hydrogentap.com. Again, this is a pulse width modulation system I'm building. 